Today we're going to tackle an insanely important topic. Why casinos are impossible to beat in the distance. It would seem that the odds are 50-50, red or black. But math turns out to be trickier. Today we'll be without water. Only facts, logic, and real math. Let's go. First, let's look at the formula for mathematical expectation. The mathematical expectation, or expected profit per bet, is a metric that helps you understand how much on average you will make or lose on a single bet over the long term. Let's understand what each component of the formula means. Win rate is the share of winning bets. For example, 60% wins means that the win rate value is 0.6. Loss rate is the share of losing bets. In fact, if we subtract the win rate value from 1, we will get the loss rate value. Average win is average win size, how much you earn on average on a successful bet. Average loss is the average size of a loss on a losing bet. Let's take a simple situation to help you understand how this works. Let's say we flip a coin. We say that every time we flip it, we'll get tails. And we bet $100 on it. If we guess, we pocket another $200 on top of the bet. But if we didn't guess, we take away the amount of the bet, which is $100. Then, win rate equals 50%, or 0 0.5. Average win equals $200. Average loss equals $100. Loss rate equals 50%. Let's substitute the numbers into the formula. So, with these rules, on average, you make $50 per bet. Reward to risk or profit to loss ratio is simply the ratio of average win to average loss. For example, 2 slash 1 means that on average, you earn $2 when you win and lose $1 when you lose. That is, in this case, average win is two times the average loss. Why it's important. Even if you only win 40% of the time, with a good reward-to-risk ratio, you can still be on the plus side. It is clear that all of us psychologically want to have a higher value of win rate and as little loss rate as possible. That is to say that we should guess 80% in 90% of cases. It all starts with a simple thing. Every bet can be mathematically described. If the chance of winning is below 50% and the amount of winning is equal to the amount of losing, your game is doomed to lose. Why is this so? Now you will understand why the casino will always be in the plus on the example of roulette. On the left you see European roulette. On the right you see American roulette. European roulette has 36 numbers plus a green zero. American roulette is even worse. There are two zeros. Would it seem that black or red is 50-50? No. <laughs> In American roulette, 18 black, 18 red, 2 green. The probability of winning on black is 47.37%, and losing is 52.63%. That means, for every $100 you bet, you lose an average of $5.26. The mathematical expectation is negative. And here's the secret. Casinos aren't about luck. It's about an infinite number of bets and a stable negative mathematical expectation. The longer you play, the closer your loss is to a guaranteed outcome. The casino operates 24-7. It is always on the plus side of the distance. A negative mathematical expectation is always bad. It says that for a period of time some yes may be an earn, but if the number of throwing this ball tends to infinity, the chances of winning are equal to zero. Yeah, we're not going to win anything. We're just going to lose our money. You got to realize that. Now let's look at the graph. Pictured here is the Nick Raj curve. This curve illustrates the relationship between win-loss ratio along the y or vertical axis, which shows the ratio of average winning amount to average losing amount, win percentage, percentage of winning trades, along the x or horizontal axis. How to read this chart? The break-even line is the boundary where a player does not earn but does not lose money on the distance. All that is, above the line, profitable zone. Below the line is the unprofitable zone. What does the curve show? If you have a low win percentage, for example 30%, you need to have a win rate much larger than the loss rate, high win-loss ratio, to stay on the plus side. In other words, win rarely but win a lot. If you have a high win percentage, like 70%, you can be forgiven small wins compared to losses. You win often, but in small amounts. Why does roulette have parameters below the break-even line? The problem is the casino's mathematical advantage, the so-called house edge. 
In European roulette, there are 37 sectors on the wheel, 0 and 1 to 36. In American roulette, there are 38 sectors, 0, double zero, and 1 to 36. When you bet on a number, such as 7, your actual chance of winning is, in European roulette, 1 in 37, about 2.7%. In American roulette, 1 in 38, about 2.63%. But the payout you get if you guess the number is only 35 to 1. You don't get paid a fair 36 to 1, European, or 37 to 1, American. This means that every bet has your distance loss built into it. It's easier with a concrete example. Imagine betting $1 on a single number in European roulette. In one out of 37 cases, you'll win $35 profit. 36 is your bet and winnings minus your own bet. In 36 out of 37 cases, you'll lose $1. Win percentage is low. Win-loss ratio is not high enough. 35 to 1 instead of 36 to 1. Because of this, your point on the chart is in the unprofitable zone, below the break-even line. And that's by the rules of the game. You simply cannot cross the line upwards without changing the game itself. This is why it is mathematically impossible to outplay the casino long-term. Players have a negative mathematical expectation at the start. The story of player's error is inextricably linked to the famous case that took place in the casino of Monte Carlo on August 18, 1913. It is hard to believe, but that evening an incredible event happened on one of the roulette tables. The black color fell out 26 times in a row. Imagine this scene. A crowded casino, tense atmosphere at the roulette table. After black has fallen 10 times in a row, a real frenzy begins among the players. Everyone suddenly decides that now it must definitely fall red and begin to massively bet on this color. But the black streak continues. 11, 12, 13 times in a row. With each new fall of black, the bets on red become bigger and more desperate. In the end, this amazing series reached 26 consecutive black falls. The probability of such an event is extremely low, about 1 in 136.8 million. However, players, succumbing to player error, continued to believe that the red was about to fall out. As a result, the casino was able to earn several million francs that night. The gambler's fallacy, also known as the Monte Carlo error, or chance maturity fallacy, is the false belief that if some random event occurs more or less frequently than expected, it is more likely to occur less or more frequently in the future, respectively. In fact, for truly random and independent events, such as the falling out of a number in roulette, the probability of each individual outcome remains the same, regardless of previous outcomes. In the case of roulette, the odds of hitting black on each individual roll are always 1837 in European roulette with one zero. Let's look at the example of flipping a coin. The probability of an eagle or tails at each toss is one half. Suppose we flip a coin five times and each time an eagle comes out. What is the probability that the sixth time the tails will fall out? Many people given to player error will say that the probability of tails is now higher, but it is not. The probability of tails falling out the sixth time is still one half. Bottom line, every spin is independent. Past results do not affect the future. This is the basic law of probability. Now let's talk about why Martingale doesn't work. Martingale is a betting strategy in which the player doubles the bet after every loss. The idea seems very simple and tempting. If you lose, you bet twice as much. If you lose again, you double it again. When you finally win, you take back all the previous losses and get a profit equal to the original bet. At first glance, it seems that this system is infallible. After all, sooner or later, luck must turn around and the right result will fall out. However, this strategy has several serious problems, because of which players almost always lose in reality. First, the series of failures can be much longer than expected. For example, if you bet on red and roulette, the chance of hitting red is about 18 out of 37, just under 50%. It would seem that the probability of losing many times in a row is small, but over the long haul it is bound to happen. Losing 6, 7, Eight times in a row is not such a rare event. Secondly, the bet doubles with each loss. 
Starting with $1 after 6 losses in a row, you will need to bet $64 to cover all previous losses. And if you are unlucky and there will be 10 losses in a row, the next bet should be $1,024. And that's just to get everything back, plus one original profit bet. Third, casinos are well aware of the Martingale strategy. That is why most casinos set betting limits. For example, if the minimum bet is $1, the maximum bet can be limited to $500 or $1,000. This means that if the series of losses is long enough, you will not be physically able to continue doubling your bet because we'll run up against the casino limit. Even if there were no limits, the player will sooner or later face equity limits. Double betting indefinitely will not work. At some point, there is simply not enough money. Thus, mathematically, the Martingale strategy does not eliminate the advantage of the casino. On the contrary, it makes possible a rapid and catastrophic zeroing of the player's bank account at the onset of a long enough series of failures. Over a short distance, Martingale can create the illusion of success because wins do happen frequently. But on a long distance, losing becomes almost inevitable. That is why this strategy is considered a dangerous trap for inexperienced players. No, no one consistently beats the casino. Neither feelings of luck nor genius systems work over the long haul. The casino plays math. You're playing hope. And math always has better odds. Have you once managed to make money in a casino?